Welcome to the Money Smart for Adults, Module 8, Managing Debt. We're going to go through this instructor guide and highlight how you can facilitate this training. As in all other modules, it starts out here with the contents page, giving you all the information relating to this module listed by section and page number so that you know exactly where to find things here. Background information for instructors, as with other modules, is exactly the same. It starts out with a reference to the tools you'll be using to deliver the training, including the guide to presenting Money Smart for Adults. Training preparation checklist is to make sure that you have everything that's going to equip you to have a successful training. Materials that you may need, as in other modules, this is a checklist of all that you're going to need to deliver the training, including the instructor guide, participant guide, and PowerPoint slides. Now regarding the participant guide, if it's a challenge for you to give copies to everyone in your training, please refer them to the online version or some other solutions that may be appropriate. Optional materials, such as the parking lot for questions, supplies for any optional introductory activity that you may be doing should be on hand. Understanding the icon section is the same for all the other modules in the Money Smart for Adults training. You can reference them here as a refresher if you need to. The module purpose is to help participants to understand what debt is and how to manage it. In this module, you'll also be defining debt and credit and how they differ, define phrases and terms commonly used to discuss debt, provide strategies for reducing debt, explain the consequences of not paying debt, and to provide an overview of student loan, medical, and high cost debt. Looking at the module at a glance table, we estimate that you'll need three hours and 50 minutes to cover the entire module, not including any breaks or optional introductory activities. You'll notice that this module has seven sections. The first four sessions provide general training about managing debt, and you'll only need two hours and 25 minutes to cover them, not including breaks or an optional introductory activity. The last three sections covering student loan, medical, and high cost debt, you can determine to include one or more of these sections if participants have those kinds of debt. Now please refer to the Guide to Presenting Money Smart for Adults, which includes additional information on selecting sections for specific audiences so you can further customize your training. Noticing the headers here, the module at a glance table lists the sections, the key takeaways, the purpose objectives, and the time estimates are all laid out here for you. All right, so let's get into the module opening and showing slide number one. As in every module for the Money Smart for Adults training, you're going to complete a few tasks, such as welcoming participants as they arrive, introduce yourself, ask them to sign in, ensure any requested reasonable accommodations are in place, and make any necessary adjustments. And once you're ready to begin the training, ask participants to complete the pre-training survey, and you'll also be showing slide number two. Now, parking lot and participant guide you want to establish a flip chart poster for the parking lot and inform participants it's for questions, concerns, ideas, and resources that you'll address during breaks or at the end of the training. Mention that the participant guide is theirs to use during and after the session and encourage them to take notes and write in them. Now, if time permits, start your training with an optional introductory activity. I highly recommend that you do this as it's a great way to get participants energized and ready to learn. You'll find suggestions for fun activities in the guide to presenting Money Smart for Adults, or you can use your own. Section one, what is debt? The objective is for participants to be able to define and contrast debt and credit, list their debts along with key details about them, and explain how debt can affect a person's financial situation. Now, before we get into this, let's pause for a moment to point out some helpful navigation features of the instructor guide. There's helpful information in the headers and footer that will help you stay oriented. In the header, the right-hand side reminds you that you're looking at the instructor guide. This is helpful if you happen to also consult a copy of the participant guide during your training. 
The left hand side of the header identifies the section you are in. The footer of the document identifies the module along with the page number. Now these modules can all seem like they look alike, but you can always know where you are by looking at the headers and footers. You'll notice that there are facilitation instructions, say, ask, do, show slide. These are prompts to guide you through the flow of the training through the section topics and are shown on every page of the section contents. So make sure that you see those and then follow them accordingly. As we get into this particular section, we're talking about what is debt. So you're introducing the topic with slide number three, slide number four, introducing the key takeaway. Understanding your debt is the first step to managing it. The first topic in this section discussion is debt and credit. You're going to start out by asking the participants a question. What's the difference between credit and debt? And write their responses on a flip chart or the whiteboard. You'll continue to move on with slides six and seven, defining what debt is. It's not the same as credit. Defining the difference between debtors and creditors on slides seven and eight. This next topic on understanding your debt starts out with a discussion on many of us make mistakes when it comes to handling debt. So understanding debt is the first step to managing it. So to understand the debt, you're going to be sharing with them how to look at all the different elements, who they owe, how much they owe, the payments, when they're due, and other important facts about the debt. Suggest that they can gather information on their debt from their credit reports, annualcreditreports.com, monthly bill statements, loan agreements, credit documents, and other items that they may have that give them information regarding their debt. Slide number 10 shows different reasons people get into debt. There's five different reasons, and this is really going to set up a discussion that you're going to have, which is shown in the box here at the bottom of page 16 in your instructor guide, to really ask the question, how does debt affect you, and how does debt affect your financial situation? These are prompts that you can do if time permits to really allow you to have this discussion prior to moving to the next slides. Now, after you do this, you ask the questions, get the participants to respond, write them on the board or the flip chart, and then move into slide 11, which gets into how debt can affect your financial situation. This is really about obligating future income. So this means that sometimes over time people may not be able to reach all their financial goals or their their goals may be delayed later because they're paying interest and fees which may extend the time that they're in debt. So that is what this slide is about which leads into our first activity of this section which is the apply it understanding my debt. Now the suggestion here is to actually have them to do this in your class if time permits. Because what they're doing here is looking at who they owe, how much they owe, the payment amount, the due dates, interest rates, and other important terms. Anything that's relevant that can be listed here on this worksheet. Now, to do this thoroughly, they are going to have to more, more than likely go to their credit reports, monthly bills and statements, their loan and credit documents, to really gather this information, but this really is an opportunity for them to really understand what they owe and what it means. So then once they have done that, then they can answer the questions here. This is the second part of the activity, which is how did you get most of your debt? And there are some check boxes that they can go through and to check off if it applies to them. But again, this is really designed to prompt their thinking about their overall debt scenario. And then of course the slide 13 reminding them of the key takeaway. Understanding your debt is the first step to managing it. Section two, how debt works. The objectives here is participants will be able to define key terms related to debt, explain how different 
types of debt work, particularly installment loans and revolving credit. Introducing the section with slide number 14 and slide 15, introducing the key takeaway, considering how debt works so you can make informed decisions about it. Now, the first activity for this particular topic in, in this section is really about debt lingo. Now, this is the same material covered in Module 7, Borrowing Basics, and it may serve as a good review of the material, or you may want to skip it altogether if participants have already attended a session on Module 7. So you make that determination, but if you are going to do this, you're going to get them into teams, make it a little fun, have them create names for their teams. You'll see the examples of it debt busters or distinguished debt decreasers, any type of fun name that they want to refer to their team, and then you're going to begin the activity. The slides that you're going to show, starting with slide number 16, you're going to be giving them a debt lingo and having the teams determine which is the correct answer. You're going to do that all the way through slide number 22. Once you've completed this activity, it sets up the discussion for installment loans and revolving credit. This is really about talking more about how debt works. So slide number 23 gets into installment loans and the different features of that with variable or adjustable rates. Then slide number 24 introduces revolving credit, credit limits, that sort of all those things pertaining to that. Then that goes into the try it activity where participants are going to look at a scenario with Zoe learning about installment loans. You're going to read the scenario or ask for a volunteer to do so. And they're going to look at this installment loan amortization table. This table really shows payments from the first payment down through the 12th payment. And you're going to give them six minutes to look at this and to answer the questions that follow. The questions are, what is the scheduled monthly payments? How much goes to interest from the first payment? How much goes to interest from the final payment? That, so this activity allows them to see why the amount of principal in each payment increases based on the fact that they're paying principal and interest and the interest payments are decreasing each month based on how the amortization is set up. So you'll explain that as they work through that particular activity. Now the next activity is still with Zoe, but now the triad is about how revolving credit works. Same thing, you read the scenario or ask for a volunteer to read it. Now this is a revolving credit sample table paying only the minimum payment each month. Give them six minutes to look through this, look at all the different nuances here of this sample and then answering the questions that follow. So the conversation now goes into fees. Slide number 27, you're showing information about additional charges that are not interest. Okay, fees that are additional charges such as annual fees, fee for late payments, fee for going over the credit limit and other fees. Car loans also have documentation fee, closing fees, and other fees as well. So you're going to be discussing that. That's going to lead into the next topic of prepayment, showing slide number 28, which is about prepayment being a strategy to reduce the cost of borrowing money. They can prepay loan in full or prepay a part of the loan. In either case, it will help them to pay off the loan faster or earlier than anticipated. The section closing is a reminder of the key takeaway, which is con considering how debt works so you can make informed decisions about it. Section three, reducing debt. The objectives here is participants will be able to explain two methods of reducing debt, the high cost debt first method and the snowball method. List where people can get help on managing debt and identify issues to be aware of relating to getting help managing debt. You're going to introduce the section and the key takeaway, slides 30 and 31. Key takeaway being develop a plan to reduce your debt and to get help if needed, such as from a trained credit counselor. 
So as we get into the topics here for this particular section, starts out talking about two strategies for reducing debt. The high cost debt first method and the snowball method. And both of these strategies works best if your participants avoid incurring more debt while they work to pay down the debt that they have. Now please note that neither strategy is better for everyone. It depends on the situation and preferences. You're gonna tell participants that you'll talk more about advantages and dis disadvantages of those strategies and how they work. So immediately you're gonna go into the apply it activity, my plan to reduce my debt. And so have them turn to page 15 in the participant guide and go through both of the methods shown and then you can practice using those methods. Slides 34 and 35 actually goes into the content regarding those particular topics and you'll lead a discussion on those things, which now moves forward into another try it activity, making a plan to reduce the debt. This is with Brian. Brian plans to reduce his debt read the scenario or ask for a volunteer to do so and then go ahead and walk them through Brian's debt table looking at both methods the high cost debt first method giving them the answers based on the answer key and the same with the snowball uh, worksheet answer key give them about eight minutes to to go through this to understand the scenario and then and then Think about which method do they think Brian would want to use and why. And then, of course, have the discussion. Now, the next topic goes into where to get help. There may be participants in the room that will want to know right away, well, where do I go to, to help with this? And so you'll begin to help them to see that there is a website, www.usa.gov, help them to go to that source or other sources that will be listed. Slide 40 gets into debt settlement companies and debt consolidation loans. So after that discussion, we're gonna come right back into the next apply activity, which is what to watch out for when getting help with my debt. So you're gonna review this with the participants and ask about any warning signs that may be missing from the list and ask if they think any sources of help are missing as well. Then write the responses on the flip chart or the whiteboard. And so you'll see here the prompts here about what questions to ask if a company, and then it gives you the list there. And then as you notice here on page 40, it gives, goes into getting help from a nonprofit credit counseling organization, a financial counselor or coach, checking with state attorney general, or read about other experiences. So have a discussion with them about that, and then you'll wrap up this section again, reiterating the key takeaway, which is developing a plan to reduce your debt and get help if needed, such as from a trained credit counselor. Section four, non-payments of debt and debts in collections. The objectives here is that participants will be able to explain the consequences of not paying debt and explain how to deal with debt in collections. You're gonna introduce the section and the key takeaway. Key takeaway being don't ignore a debt collector. Make sure any debt you're asked to pay is valid as soon as possible, get help if you need it. Slide 45 introduces the topic, the life cycle of debt. You'll go through that. Slide 46 continues with that discussion, but then slide 47 comes right back about not paying debt and what can happen if they don't pay debt. So you're going to have a discussion there, of course, write their responses on the flip chart or whiteboard. And then slides 48 and 49 continues with this discussion about what could possibly happen if, they, if participants don't pay debt. Then the activity. Apply it, dealing with my debts in collection. Now, if you have time, you can spend with time with your participants in the training to go over some of these particular information points that's listed here on these pages. So like, for example, 
number one, get specifics from the debt collector. Number two, verify the debt using a debt verification letter and so on. As you see here on these pages, as it continues with the steps to take to really help participants deal with their debt in collections. And again, you're going to determine how much or if all of these particular steps that you're going to talk about during the time that you have in the training. Slide number 51 and 52 goes into making plans to pay a debt and also if payment in full is not possible. So you're going to help them to think about setting up a payment plan um, based on what they can afford to do. Slide 53 is really about debt collectors must follow rules. This is really important based on the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act and you want to make sure that participants understand what these are, what the do's and don'ts are. For example, as you know, debt collectors can't contact participants at inconvenient times. They can't contact participants at work if they're told orally or in writing that they're not allowed to get calls there and so on. And so there are other potential things that they can't do that you are equipping participants to really understand so that they can make sure that if they are being violated in terms of what debt collectors are doing, they can respond accordingly. The Federal Trade Commission website, www.ftc.gov, is a great, great resource. They have consumer information on debt collection, so participants can go there and get more information. In addition to that, they can report problems with a debt collector to um, the State Attorney General's Office on the National Association of Attorney General's website, which is also listed there in the instructor guide, and the FTC.gov and also the ConsumerFinance.gov. All these sources, these agencies are there for participants to report problems to. And moving to the section closing, again, remembering the key takeaway. The key takeaway being don't ignore a debt collector. Make sure any debt you're asked to pay is valid as soon as possible. Get help if you need it. Section 5, dealing with student loan debt. The objectives here is participants will be able to explain what makes student loan debt unique and list some repayment options for federal student loans. So you're going to introduce the section and key takeaway, slide 55 and 56. Slide 56 stating when it's time to pay back your student loans, consider your options and understand what will happen if you're late with payments. Your loan servicer can help you explore repayment plans. So the first topic in this particular section is defining what is student loan debt. And so you'll begin to have that discussion with the participants leading into the next topic about what can happen if I don't repay student loans. The key here is to help participants to understand that just with other types of debt, problems caused by falling behind on student loan payments can include several things. And with those things becomes consequences or certain things that could happen to them that might be um, really surprising to them, such as a decrease in credit scores, decreased ability to borrow money, stress of owing the money, and delay in reaching other goals. And so your training is going to be about these particular things, again, raising their awareness on the things that could happen. So that's going to lead into the first applied activity, my student loan debt. Give them three minutes to use this checklist to explore how to student loan debt might be affecting them. Now you may have participants in the room that don't have student loans and so they may answer a little bit differently. That's okay. What we want to do is make sure that you give everybody in the room an opportunity to go through here and to vote from a very safe and non-judgmental place okay and then it's okay if there are those who decide not to participate in the exercise so please make sure to emphasize that so that everyone in the room can feel like they are okay with with this with this activity so after doing that you're going to ask what did you learn or take away from this voting activity write their responses on the flip chart or whiteboard. 
So the next discussion is types of student loans. You're showing slide number 61, indicating that there are two major types of student loans, the private student loans and the federal student loans. And you'll be giving the differences between the two and then moving into the bigger conversation, which is about student federal student loan repayment options. And you'll have the content here listed on page 56, and it gets into the grace periods um, and choosing a standard repayment plan, a graduated repayment plan, or extended repayment plan, additional options on slide 63, repayment plans based on income, pay as you earn, income-based repayment plan, income contingent repayment plans, and all these particular plans and making sure that you go over them. Now, in terms of moving forward with the discussion, there is forbearance and deferment. So that's what slide 64 is doing. You're going to be mentioning those particular terms and defining them. Slide 65, loan forgiveness, cancellation, and discharge. You'll go through all the points about that. There are five different areas here that you're going to be discussing regarding closed school discharge, public service loan forgiveness, teacher loan forgiveness, and so on. Slide number 66 gets into taking action to prevent default, which is really, really important to make sure that your participants understand how to prevent default. And there is a prompt on page 59 to prevent default. Consider contacting the loan servicer to find out if they can change the payment due date, reviewing the different repayment plan options and applying for a repayment plan and exploring eligibility for forbearance, deferment, loan forgiveness, loan cancellation, or loan discharge. Okay, so those are the options there. But of course, emphasizing them to continue making payments if possible until they receive official notification of the new repayment plan. Slide 67 talks about beware of student loan scams. Yes, there are companies out there that may advertise they can help and pay, but be cautious. And this is what you want to emphasize to your participants and some things around tips to avoid student loan payment scams. The activity, the trying activity, exploring options for repaying student loans is really about making sure that you can understand the options for Hugo. He's worried about his student loans read the scenario or have a volunteer do it, give them about four minutes to answer the questions, and then just understand that, you know, you don't have enough information to resolve Hugo's worry, but you can give him some ideas on where to start. So you'll notice in the answer key to the first question, what repayment options could Hugo explore, it gives you a list of the different repayment plans that we just went over during our discussion. So that's what this activity is about. And then where can Hugo go to learn more about repaying federal student loans? Then you'll give the Department of Education's website, www.studentaid.gov. So that leads up to warming the participants up to really getting through the process of thinking through their own student loans. And that's what the next activity is about. Apply it behind the My Student Loans checklist. And you may want to have them do this after the training. However, if there is time during the training, let them start it and then take some questions or have some conversation about what they actually completed on the worksheets. Here you see on page 63 of the instructor guide is the actual worksheet that your participants are going to be completing. And notice here, uh, the information here. So this may take a bit of time for them to think through and to come up with um, the answers in terms of when they complete these things. And there's a lot here. And so again, you may want them to continue doing this after your training. But if you want to have some discussion around any of these points to really stimulate their thinking and to really get them to really anchor the fact that, you know, what to do around if they are behind in their student loans, this is going to really help them. And as you move towards the section closing, it is about remembering the key takeaway when it's time to pay back your student loans. 
Consider your options and understand what will happen if you're late with payments. Your loan servicer can help you explore repayment plans. Section 6, Managing Medical Debt. The objectives here is participants will be able to explain what makes medical debt unique, explain how to deal with medical debt in collections. So you're introduced to section and the key takeaway, which is if you receive a medical bill, make sure it's valid, you can't afford to pay it, try to set up a payment plan. What is medical debt is the first topic in this section on slide 73. You're giving them the definitions of what medical debt is and going forward asking them the questions of why do medical bills often turn into medical debt and have them to take notes on page 37 in their participant guide and have the discussion. So slide 74 gets into some of the reasons that could be mentioned by your training participants and of course add the additional bullet points that's listed here on page 68 of your instructor guide if these points are not already contributed. That leads into the applying activity taking action on my medical debt and you're going to suggest that you the entire training we all look at it together. Okay, so you're going to follow the script here starting on slide number 76 is what they will be seeing on the PowerPoint, but you have your script here in the instructor guide and it follows the exact order of what they're looking at on their worksheet. And so go ahead and spend time going through each of these bullet points that's going to take you over to page number 70 in your instructor guide, even on to page 71. And then finally, you'll get a snapshot of what they're looking at on their particular participant guides. And you'll see that on the next few pages as well. So I just wanted to let you know that you can forge ahead by looking at the worksheet that's in your guide, which is which is mirrors what they're looking at in their guide. Or of course you can have a copy of the participant guide next to you so you can actually see it from there. Either way it goes, it's here for you to have this as a reference as you go through each of these points. That's going to really set up the next portion of this section, which is the topic of medical debt in collections and credit. Medical debt that went to collections but has since been paid is not a factor in most FICO store scores. And then unpaid medical debt that is in collection, it is a factor in FICO scores, but it has a smaller impact. The triad activity here is what to do about medical debt. And so we have Luther, and Luther has medical bills. So again, you'll read the scenario or have a volunteer do it. And then you're going to ask the question, what steps can Luther take to reduce the chance that his medical bills will go to a debt collector? And just have the conversation, of course, write their responses and contribute some of the additional points that's listed in your instructor guide, if not already contributed. And then moving towards the section closing, remembering the key takeaway, which is if you receive a medical bill, make sure it's valid. If you can't afford to pay it, try to set up a payment plan. Section seven, understanding high cost debt. Objectives here is participants will be able to explain what makes high cost debt unique and identify alternatives to high cost debt. Introduction to the section and the key takeaway, that's slide 80 and 81. Key takeaway being understand how high cost debt works, identify lower cost options for the future. You're going to define what is high cost debt. Slide number 82 gets into the different definitions here, identifying exactly what high cost debt is. Slide 83 and slide 84 goes into some examples, car and vehicle title loans, payday or payday advance loans, and then slide 85, pawn shop loans. So you're having discussions about all these different types of debt, which leads into the triad activity, exploring alternatives to high cost debt, where we have Jamila and alternatives to high cost debt. So you'll read the scenario or have a volunteer do it. You're going to ask the question, what are Jamila's alternatives for covering the electric bill? And then you'll write the responses. You'll contribute more if not already mentioned by participants. You're going to ask another question, how can Jamila avoid the situation in the future? 
write their responses and contribute the additional points if not already contributed. And then we're going to move into alternatives to high cost debt. This is the apply it activity. So you're moving directly from Jamila now into this, this apply it activity. And again, if time permitting, try to do this through your training. It's going to be very empowering for them to do this and to maybe have some discussion around this or to ask some questions around some of the content here on this worksheet. Again, my alternatives to high cost debt. So as you can see here, there is a checklist to identify the alternatives that can work for the training participants. And so that's what you'll see here on page 82 in the instructor guide. And then there are longer term alternatives that's listed on the next page. And again, these are a checklist for them to look at and see if it applies to them or something that they may want to consider going forward. And then finally, this section closing, remembering the key takeaway. Key takeaway being understand how high cost debt works, identify lower cost options for the future. Module closing. You'll see here you have all the seven sections and their key takeaways for this entire module. So mention the takeaways for the sections that you included in the training. Remember at the beginning, of this overview, we mentioned that the first four sections of this module is general information on managing debt and the remaining three sections were based on different types of debt if your participants have them and you have the opportunity to choose if you are going to include those topics in your training and here you are. So again, mention the key takeaways that you discuss during the training. Slide 89 shows the take action slide and every module has the same take action activity. It's important not to skip it, even if you can only spare a couple of minutes. The participants will remember what you just presented a lot easier if they can write down a few action steps. Knowledge isn't enough. Action is required. Post training survey showing slide number 90 ask participants to complete the post-training survey for the Money Smart for Adults Module 8 Managing Debt and give them some time to complete this and after they do you can collect the completed surveys if you plan to review them or compare them to the pre-training surveys that you got at the beginning of the training and review the answers to the knowledge questions using the answer key that's on the next page and that's what you see here. This page shows the entire Money Smart for Adults modules, and you'll see where Module 8 fits into the overall curriculum. So this will conclude our overview of Money Smart for Adults Module 8, Managing Debt.